hey, wow, this is great. We can literally sell. Don't get me wrong. It's just, mm -hmm. just we can can find investors for them very easily because there we go. I really found out that the most successful people and the most, yeah, I would say happy people in the world are those ones that experimented a lot. Welcome, René. Hi. To, to our second edition of um, Journey to Impact, My Journey to Impact. And uh, we're now focusing on René's journey to impact. So we would like to know from you, René, exactly how did you arrive at impact? How did, um, what, what led up to that moment that you realized that impact is the thing you want to dedicate your life to? And how was that That's moment? And how is there a moment? And um, or is there a series of moments? And and um, mm -hmm. what did that lead to? So that's that's the journey we would like to follow. And we will, mm -hmm. I will, I will um, mute myself now just uh, for a while, so that you have that you have some space to to um, explore and elaborate. And um, I will just um, gently come in with some some questions um, as we go. Okay. Oh. So I don't hope I hope that you don't mute yourself too much uh, because I hope that this will be an interactive session. So um, it's a conversation, yes. <laughs> yeah. So, but, but to start, um, basically from my background, um, I'm an IT guy. So started my career um, working for U.S. companies and then came back to Germany. Started as the CTO of a very large web house company named Strato here in Europe and. Um, uh, while while I was manager and IT manager of this company, um, I also was a business angel, a classic business angel. My, my purpose or the purpose before I found what we call impact today was um, to promote entrepreneurship again in Germany, because that was the idea behind it. Um, because when I looked at the US, for instance, then um, uh, the when when you go out of college so you finished your college and you're finished um let's say with a degree in in it or whatever um you and you talk to people then then they came out of the university and said what i can do with my knowledge so what i can do and if you talk to <laughs> people with the same age um the same situation here in germany or in europe preferably but I, I have a look to to germany of course and then they they are asking them the question uh where i can work where i can find work and that's a totally different approach so um as you see um uh, that is due to the fact that we had very strong corporates uh after world war ii here mm -hmm. um in the middle of europe and that led to the very cozy situation to find a decent job, to work your whole time, uh, your whole life for this mm -hmm. single company, earn quite a decent amount of money and everything was fine. So that, mm -hmm. that basically is not uh, pushing you into an entrepreneurship and into risk, of course, the risk and opportunity, but basically most people at least see, see the risk in there. And, and um, I said, basically, I mean, that shouldn't be like it is at that point in time. I'm, I'm just looking back into, let's say, the year of uh, 2001, where, where I was uh, starting uh, mm -hmm. in Germany with uh, the job at Strato again. Mm -hmm. And that was my personal, uh, I think, purpose to say, hey, if I can bring something in, then probably the view from my former Silicon Valley experience. Mm -hmm. And um, and this was, was, was the reason why I was a business angel. And um, you were asking me what 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 was my first touch point of mm -hmm. let's say impact and especially impact investing mm -hmm. was um, the situation I'm um, as uh, I was a mentor of different um, several um, uh, accelerator programs here in Berlin mm -hmm. startups and um, I think it was probably eight years ago or so what what do we have twenty two yeah around eight years ago. Mm -hmm. um, there were the first companies in these programs um, that were um, focused on impact. So doing impactful things, uh, solving ecological issues or uh, societal issues, et cetera. 
while also working for profit. And we were thinking, hey, wow, this is great. We can literally sell, don't get me wrong, it's just, mm -hmm. just we can, can find investors for them very easily because they're, good, they're good, doing good things um, for impact and they're for profit. So it's the best of both worlds. Mm -hmm. And then we went to the VCs and they said, go away with these tree huggers. Basically, all of these impact guys are tree huggers and um, they're probably behind their mission, but not behind our money. And mm -hmm. that's that's that, so I went out and said, okay, that's 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 an opinion, strong opinion, okay, but I have to accept it. Mm -hmm. And then we went to the trusts and foundations, and they said, wow, yeah, an impactful thing, and uh, we really love to support it, but not for profit, mm -hmm. because uh, on one hand, um, it's it's a very risky investment. Basically, you have to know uh, here in Germany when you uh, run the foundation. Um, the amount of money that you have, um, it, it, you, you can spend uh, on, let's say, getting your your money back for the investment. So, so you you stay, yeah, kind of net cash balance mm -hmm. stays the mm -hmm. same. Then you have to find the most conservative way of uh, investing your money, and definitely <laughs> investing in pre-seed and seed companies is probably not. That's, you know this. Um, mm -hmm. It's not the 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 uh, least risky way of of investing your money. So this was the first thing, and the second thing is, uh, they said, um, it, and if we are lucky, and and there is an exit, and and there is probably millions coming into us, then we are literally literally going to hell tax wise, and that's that's also the second reason why mm -hmm. why not uh, to invest in for profit companies uh, in early stage, even if they're they're for impact. So I, I or we were sitting there saying this 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 can't be i mean we have uh this is a good business and it is for impact we can count the impact but basically nobody wants to invest it and so uh with a um, smaller circle of angels we started investing uh in let's say the first dozen the first batch of companies and uh after that i found out that this works quite well um the difference between the business models that you see and this is probably the second reason why I went to in impact investing is um, especially in the times let's say yeah as I said eight years ago seven eight years ago you probably can probably remember remember there is ad tech companies and everything and um, all of these companies were just built to build big brand names to uh, acquire customers etc but never built to be profitable so mm -hmm. the only reason was that someone wants to buy this for a high valuation and then they, the founders run away with a whole lot of money and probably uh, either start the next company or retire. And mm -hmm. is this a sustainable kind of economy? No, it is not. Um, even though if, if, if I just, 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 just uh, even don't include the social and, and ecological aspects, but this is... Um, I mean, the, the whole term of sustainability comes from a business standpoint, by the way. I think it was the, the, the Bavarian forest law from 1500 something um, that said that, that we have to, uh, so that the next generation also has trees um, to, to use for woodworks, et cetera. Um, we really have to take care to reforest the trees. And this is not, not because of the ecology, but, but of the economy. So it's, mm -hmm. it's generally sustainability is an Econom and, and economic economic firm. Mm -hmm. And so coming back to, to the VC topic, so this VC topic, the, the classic VC topic and the classic startup topics uh, were kind of business on steroids, uh, which is basically insane. And um, when I was looking at the business plans for uh, impactful companies, I've seen there is more substance in it. It's not mm -hmm. only substance regarding their business models, but also substance and regarding uh, the point that they're building uh, things. So even as solar containers or water purification things, or um, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, business ideas on remodeling homes for, for people that need assistance, et cetera. Mm -hmm. so, um, so you see that, that this is the core of what usually investing and the whole business model in uh, the middle of Europe was, I, you know, it, mm -hmm. this is an SME space. So, mm -hmm. and there is many families still operating their businesses for many generations. And this is where we come from. So this is the business or the model of investment type that fits to Europe. 
it is not the investment uh, type of steroids to to have mega high risks and mega high opportunities and we're all looking for unicorns and so so and this is this is besides the ecological and and uh, and, and social effects this is something that this, i want to really promote with impact investing mm -hmm. is to say hey look at the more substantial types of businesses it might be that you don't get let's say 20 multiple uh for 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 your investment Mm -hmm. But basically, and now we come to the, the 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 next thing why I'm fan for impact investing. It's not only because of the positive impact effects; it is also the case that this is a more stable portfolio. Mm -hmm. And the um, I would probably say that the, the typical thing is that that eighty percent, at least eighty percent of uh, the companies that you invest in at, in seed stage uh as going bankrupt over time so because it's or it's not working or you do a fire sale so and only 20 percent probably earn the money mm -hmm. and there's some that that work out well but with the impact investing uh part it's a little different because you don't ex over promise too much and you don't expect these extremely high multiples um, it is also possible with a lower amount of investment and with more, let's say, experiments to to gradually ramp up the business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the um, the um, the possibility to fail is also lower. And so, in the end, when it comes to absolute numbers, the the phased out portfolio, which was non impactful, uh, has not generated as much money as the one that is in impact investing because, mm -hmm. of course, there is less multiples. Of course no question but there's also less failures which means which results uh -huh. in the the total exit sum or the total income sum also from dividends and so um is higher than from the classic portfolio so that's uh -huh. that's basically my idea and so i really love it from the heart because i really think that um if we want to tackle the issues which are listed in the sustainable development goals um it is we will definitely not reach these goals only with public funds we mm -hmm. need the private capital and we need to motivate the money towards it so we need to find an attractiveness uh, in the world of economy um attracting money towards uh positive social and ecological impact mm -hmm. and this this is this is the thing that i like okay um <clears throat> I want to. I'm gonna gonna repeat part of what I heard, and and then and then lead that into into um, into a question. So you gracefully skipped over your entire experience in the Silicon Valley and um, and the U.S. in general, um, but effectively that's why you, um, in addition to what's uh, entrepreneurial in yourself, um, you saw how entrepreneurs go out and, and solve problems in the world. Mm -hmm. Um, much more so than here in Germany. Yeah. Right. So, and and then back in Germany, you saw that there's a breed of entrepreneurs who actually solve problems because in, in my world, entrepreneurship is about solving problems. So one can argue every entrepreneur uh, solves a problem, but some solve the problem how to fill up their bank account others solve uh, um, societal or economic uh, or or environmental or uh, societal pro problem mm -hmm. and if you look back um in history the, the the large companies that are now the large employers in germany were founded exactly by that type of person somebody um who was very aware of the the societal impact of the organization but also of the massive opportunity that was presented by solving a very specific problem mm -hmm. like energy like um, the the vision of putting a, a a computer on every desk was um uh, preceded by the vision of having a light bulb in every home mm -hmm. by a german entrepreneur who is now um, uh, one of the one of the um, uh, largest, um, funnily, one, 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 one of the largest um, energy providers in, 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 in Europe, right? So, um, so do you see? And, and 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 so this links back to the to the to the um, point that you say, okay, these companies are more stable, 
in a way, they're more conservative, they're more risk aware. Um, and, um, but at the same time, there's a, there's a market that has, has been produced by, the, um, by those who are solving the problem of their own bank account um, that um, is co-solving the problem of the, the returns for the, for the VCs. And so now the VCs are, are more interested in that part um, than in solving real world issues. Um, and so in a way, it's a, it's a long tail game. So if you, if you impact entrepreneurship um, could then be defined as a long tail game. Yes, you could have a Michael Jackson, like an Uber or something from time to time. But um, if you have a whole bunch of really, really good um, problem solvers um, uh, in, in the long tail, your overall sum of profit is actually higher. Yeah. So that's, is that kind of like what you're saying? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you say it short, yes. Um, basically, it's about, I mean, uh, the, the, just from, an, from, from the standpoint of someone who, who's investing and who's looking at, let's say, I'm, I, I came, that is probably what I skipped. I came from innovation management and, and uh, selling literally the future. So, so to say, my Silicon Valley background. Um, when I look at, let's say, the, the 17 SDGs, the majority of them, I don't tell, I, I would not say all of them, but the majority of them um, tell you where to go because this, mm -hmm. these are pressing issues and they need solutions and mm -hmm. solutions are products and products need innovation. Uh, innovation needs innovators and these are mainly entrepreneurs. And this is also the reason why you find the most interesting solutions at the moment um, inside of the SDG arena is coming from young companies because mm -hmm. these are the, the, the innovators, the motors um, of, of this, this whole thing. So to come back to your question or to, 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 to emphasize your statement, I really think that um, the classic VC scene, and you see more and more of them forming up also here in Berlin, for instance, there is, let's say the folks of, of uh, uh, Revent, for instance, or um, uh, the uh, Exantia guys, and, and, and. Um, if you look at, at who's working there, mm -hmm. these are all coming from the classic VC scene. And why they are doing this is just because the RF cost, doing good things is nice. It's, it's something for your heart but mm -hmm. it's also about a good business opportunity. And I think um, that the, let's turn this, this turn towards solutions addressing the SDGs also comes from the part that there is a whole, that there's a huge business opportunity. Mm -hmm. And this is something favorable, of course. And do you see that being matched by um, problem solvers? So, so in a way, in a way, this is uh, like a, a, bu a bunch of juicy problems presented on a silver tablet um, in the form of SDGs, right? So you can go out and say, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to pick these three and I'm going to put them together into something that actually solves those. Um, do you see that happening? Yes and no. Um, yeah. I start with a no and then I come to the, to the yes. <laughs> okay. um, yeah, because we, to, to, to turn out with, with a positive uh, yeah. uh, outlook, it, I think it's better than, than to say, and this, this, this and that is, is mm -hmm. not correct. If you look at the DACs, which are um, intended for impact investors, you mm -hmm. find out that many of them are, uh, I would not say intended for impact investors, but for probably those ones that support venture philanthropy or even our nonprofit. But they're trying to package this into a full profit package, mm -hmm. uh, which is from my point of view wrong. And I always give the feedback to say, uh, when you hear it from, let's say, half a dozen of people uh, out of, let's say, a dozen that say, uh, this is probably not something which I would invest in because um, it solves a problem. But basically, um, we either you have to keep on putting money in there, mm -hmm. um, which then is not economically sustainable, by the way. Um, or um, I can give money, but basically there will never be a return from my side. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, then I think the heart of impact investing is, as I said, to attract or to, to make investing in these topics so attractive that even the large institutional investors can't get around and uh, want to invest in there. Um, 
there is, of course, the spectrum left and right um, from the impact investing, which means on one end, there is the just for profit investments, don't care, at tech, 20 multiple something, business on steroids. And on the other hand, there is the, the philanthropy and venture philanthropy, which means that you, you as an investor, you're happy if you don't lose your money, probably if it's not a donation, but basically mm -hmm. you don't expect, really don't mm -hmm. expect a return. If there is a return, then it's nice, mm -hmm. but you reinvest it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but impact investing is about investing, and, and this 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 is the core word here is investing, and it has to promote impact um, on eyes level, and that's that's mm -hmm. basically what what the intention is. So um, to get back to the no, I see that at least half of the decks, probably even more, uh, will not fit into that spectrum, but mm -hmm. are intended to. Feel like this so mm -hmm. to 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 be packaged like like for impact investors, but but this is not bad. I just say um, probably we have to redirect them. For instance, to let's say the EVPA network, uh, which is the European Venture Philanthropy Network, um, to connect them with the right types of investors and mm -hmm. to to change the business plan a little to make this attractive for for venture for the venture venture philanthropy sector. On the other hand, and now we come to the yes. You see many very, um, very interesting solutions and even some um, surprising solutions where you say, really, you can make money out of it. And, mm -hmm. and then you have a look into it. For instance, in the education sector, um, there is one part, um, which I also realized because I was was talking to uh, Bernd Rogendorf, which, mm -hmm. which, is, yeah. uh, which is founded I do. And they're doing, in fact, um, uh, education software for children, but especially targeted for those ones which are in the global south. And um, and as as you know, the earlier you start with with the teaching, the better it is. But it has to be very attractive because now we come to the for profit part because um, the parents pay for the educations because there's mainly no free education in the countries. So they know, but they only pay if there is an effect. And if the children say, hey, that was cool. And uh, if they see that, that this is something uh, where, where your children uh, grow um, uh, along with the education content. And, um, and so you see something which I said, hey, how you can make money out of this, this education part? Yeah, because there is no public education or just, just mm -hmm. a very tiny bit. And so, but they got used to it and it, either it is, it is brought into classic things or it's brought into, let's say, modern style things and you have to have a different approach. It's, it's more entrepreneurial and, and, and this makes me feel also good, even though uh, many people, especially in Germany say, oh, is it really fair to make money out of education? Yeah, why not? Because it's, it's, it's just the way it is. Also, we pay for education it's a, it's by a this. Yeah, yeah, but but this is something different. Yeah. Well, in, ba in Bernd's case, is also um, the the fact that he manages to be a factor of two thousand cheaper than yeah. the government programs who try to yeah. sing. So that's exactly. that's a um, non negotiable argument, right? So so, <laughs> <laughs> um, and um, um, we have a guest coming in. Um, hey, hey, we have a guest coming in. Um, Let's give him a moment. Alexander, welcome. Hi. <laughs> Where you're not hearing us. Um... <clears throat> Shall I sing and dance? <laughs> welcome. Welcome, Alexander. Uh, hello. Well, sorry. Sorry, We're... sorry. We're, we're in, the, in the middle of the conversation. Why don't you take a moment, tune in, and um, signal us when you when you want to when you want to join the conversation, um, and uh, then we go on from there. Um, so, <clears throat> so what you were saying, Rene, is um, what what I heard is that the there is an inflow of people who want to solve problems, mm -hmm. um, and not all of them are in the category of um, actually being able to return money. Um, but just the simple, the, the, the simple fact that there's, um, that you have to um, seed or weed through them and see which ones are which 
in 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 my interpretation means that there are more that there there's a there's a lot trying to solve yep. um exactly. which uh, which seems to be um it seems to be supporting a theory i wanted to ask you about which is um is it possible that in a time of um massive crisis uh, like we're in with the planet and humanity at the moment um there's more opportunity for entrepreneurship so we will naturally start seeing more entrepreneurs um and um and and then the real question becomes um is there a way to learn about how to solve these problems effectively and sustainably in the sense that they can actually carry themselves on the one hand for the entrepreneur so it's actually a business model so it's um it's not something that requires a constant inflow of energy let's say in the form of money mm -hmm. um but it can sustain itself and um and then learn how also in addition um create a surplus which has been um the, the number one uh, experiments uh, for humanity for the last 10,000 years, creating surplus for your community so you can uh, you afford to have priests and musicians. Um, and, and in this case, pay your VC. Um, and on the other hand, it, it, do you see VCs entering a more long-term game? Because I think that's, that's something that has to match these, these more conservative models that um, are could have the potential to be on par with um, organizations like Bosch, um, who are also in a very long-term conservative model, but actually extremely, extremely um, successful, right? So, so um, do you see, do you see that there's a, that is learnable? And do you see a change in the VC world towards that um, long-term-ish um, game? That's a complex question. I know. So, sorry. <laughs> I don't want to start a too long monologue, but um, I think the question is twofold. The, the one thing is, can you learn how, how to design your, your, your ideas towards solving the pressing, pressing issues uh, around the SDGs and make it, uh, let's say, financially sustainable to, to do this? This is the first part of the question. Um, I think, yes. I mean, um, we see that many of those companies that are really impactful have a um, very high degree of innovation are founded by people, of course, I mean, this is a typical thing for startups, uh, for people that, that are, let's say, in the age between 20 and 30, and, um, and that's the same here. But when it comes to my perspective on when I started my first impact investments, I really have to, had to tell um these startups hey folks you're for impact yes we're for impact uh yeah you you're solving issues along the stgs what are the stgs um so <laughs> you, 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 you see the point this was this was in the beginning my feeling that many of these companies literally stumbled upon impact that this is some topic that they address is already listed in one of the pressing challenges of mankind. But the nowadays, you see that these companies are really designed around these issues. So people look at the catalog of issues that are around there, and uh, they know about the SDGs, they know even probably about the IRIS catalog and so. Um, so there is really a learning curve and you see that that there is um, more and more um, companies and ideas coming up towards that. So that's, this is my answer to the first question. The second question is, do I see that the, also the, the ecosystem um, for financing changes in long-term perspectives um, in, in, in many other aspects? Yes, definitely, um, but not only in the finance industry. I mean, one, my company, which is Lumen Impact, uh, uh, finance boutique building, let's say, financial products for SDG-oriented um, uh, investments. Um, 
is one example. So it is um, many of these projects or some of these projects that we see, we are not an investor. So as my company is not an investor, but is building uh, financial products, for instance, for um, for other companies like Africa Green Tech, for instance, we're building uh, a fund for them um, to scale up better, or we are designing um, other uh, debt-oriented vehicles, uh, bonds, for instance, impact-linked bonds for other companies, because what we also need to change is how to invest and what kind of investments. If we're, For instance, there is one mobility company that we're working for, uh, they approached us to say, can you help us in, in raising uh, uh, or in, in finding the right investors because we're, we're, we're raising funds and we want to sell equity. And um, we're typically no fundraisers, but we said, why do you need that money? And they said, yeah, because um, we have a huge contract uh, from the German government or from, from cities in Germany um uh to to uh, build more of these uh bikes or more of these e-mobility uh things um but uh, we don't have money for building it so we need to run the next batch and i said this is something which should not be solved by selling equity but <laughs> by uh by uh by that well, solution, but we're not; they're not bankable. So you really need to find. You really need to find. Um, uh, you really need to find someone that is able. So in the, the private debt market, um, to say this is this is not such a high risk, and and I really see that there is impact, and I see that that this is possible. So you don't dilute too much. Now we come to the this the second part. You don't dilute the the impact. Um, the founders of impactful companies really want to see their journey over the let's say next 10, probably 20 years, um, how they change the world with their solution. And that's not possible if you are selling all of the equity. So basically that you don't sit behind the steering wheel anymore. And this is something we really need to change. So also the financial industry needs to change. Um, it also comes to longer term perspectives and it comes to next thing is uh, we see also companies to be founded in a kind of um, a trust uh, and foundation model. Um, um, uh, so purpose, like the purpose model, for instance, um, to put them um, firsthand into a situation where they are not, uh, let's say, influenced by, by the ones that, that finance the company. I really, I really love the idea. I have to say, uh, sometimes um, it might be a little hindering. Um, are really love the idea and especially for grown-ups yeah so that they can can really transform themselves as they say for instance we don't need external money anymore because we're stable and we just want to grow and and i know that the journey needs to be longer so um uh, we want to go with a with a foundation model uh, probably um anyway but there is the whole ecosystem changes it is not a radical change, I would probably say. It is um, it is going, let's say, not too fast, but it's going forward. And I, it, with every year I see there is more innovation, there is more impact-oriented founders, there is more um, impact-focused finance solutions, whether it might be impact VCs, long-term perspectives. So, and also the legal side, or at least the the the, the engineering side for for um, how to build your company is also growing. Um, isn't it? Uh, I mean, as you were speaking about this, I was I was wondering, um, going back to my uh, example of um, uh, people like uh, um, the founder of uh, RWE or. Um, or Linde or Bosch, um, um, how did they how did they start up? Um, how did they fund this um, these 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 endeavors and um, and how did they manage to retain um, so many of their shares? Like in the case of Bosch, that they could actually um, hand the, uh, the organization over to um, their own foundation at the end of their life, right? So. Um, um, isn't that an interesting model for for this for this kind of um, um, building an organization? Mm -hmm. have yes, you, absolutely. Have, have you have you looked at that? Do you know Do you know anything about? Um... Oh, I'm 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 uh, also in a supervisory board of a company um, that is transforming themselves right now into mm -hmm. uh, this kind of foundation model. Yeah. 
Um, and uh, this is probably done because, I mean, you have to be in the lucky situation that, that the management itself um, knows about their purpose and knows how to make this sustainable even over the period of time when they're working for the company. And, um, and they have the majority stake still. I think this is some crucial um, element. So you can later on decide, for instance, for share buyback programs to, um, to, to get the, let's say, 100% of your shares back mm -hmm. to transform it then to a uh, foundation. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, when I look at those companies that you mentioned, um, this was literally with all of these companies this was this was the same um so there there was the possibility because of the huge profitability of these companies that they were able to um to buy back their shares and to have the free floating or external uh, investors to reduce to the minimum so that you squeeze it out and then then the company owns itself because the the, mm -hmm. the whole shares are just by let's say the founders and and the company and then uh, there is a very small amount of people that can decide to transform this into a foundation, of course. Mm -hmm. But you have to be in a unique position or you have to be in the right mindset to do this right from the get go. So in the case you're, you're talking about, um, the founders um, were about, um, again, solving a very specific issue. Mm -hmm. um, and um, and they, they weren't so much, they were about success, but they weren't so much about um, financial success, although they turned out to be extremely financially successful, for successful, but, but um, so is that, is that an, a property of such a founder that they're, um, that they're obsessed about the solution? Um, and that's because, because when I, when I think about the, 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 one of the founders of, of that organization, um, he is obsessed about making it profitable um, in order to make it grow and sustain itself, not for him to get rich, because he wants to he wants to see this solution in the world and scale up in the in the world. And that's a um, is that a mindset that is crucial for a successful impact company or the impact entrepreneur? Yes. And if so, okay. Okay, and then um, how do you filter for that? How do you um, how do you understand whether whether somebody is actually that kind of person? And then the third question is: um, Is there a way to institutionalize that mindset? Meaning, um, you, you don't want to be founder dependent for a while, okay, but after a while, no. So. Um, so is there a way to institutionalize that mindset in organizations that um, you want to scale up to that level, um, which you want and have to, to solve the SDGs? Um, what is needed to do that? So to come back to your question to, is this necessary? I already said yes. Um, when I'm talking to other impact investors or um, impact VCs and so, um, I mean, you, you always, when, when you invest in companies, you always invest in teams first. This is something that you know from, from the investment scene since, let's say, the last two decades. So there is this, this is nothing new. But um, I think um, it's not only about the team and their skills and their, their business history and their innovation history, what, what they did in the past and so on, so on, so on. It is especially exactly about that what we are doing today, talking about their journey to impact and to really find out um, what's their personal motivation? Why do they feel for uh, producing this kind of solution? What, what is their, what's their journey towards this solution? And then you find out that the, I would say nearly 100% of these companies that are really impact-minded were founded by people that have a true story, whether it came from it came from the family and friends, or they were working in a company where everything worked differently, and they want to make something different here, and they want to have an impact on this and that, 
or they were, for instance, I just like here, Friedel from Planet A or so was, was doing world travel, seeing plastic pollution everywhere, and, and uh, really we have to do something against it. Um, so there is a, a situation where you really feel that, that these persons are connected to that, what they do. And this is not only due to their profession and what, what, the, what the skills are, but also from their uh, heartfelt journey. Um, towards this. I think this is something which is different to the classic style of investment because you really have to, to ask people um, what was your journey to impact? Exactly. <laughs> you should do this um, when you could probably now invest into me, yeah, uh, because you, you know why I arrived at, at, at the impact investing uh, space. No, I'm just kidding. The, um, the, the last question was about um, what what is the preparation, uh, how, how, how we learn about um, uh, being in that way? Hmm, that's a tricky question because I don't have a, a certain answer to that. Um, I, I, I feel and I see, I'm, and I mean, you see this every day, um, that the, the question of why we exist and why do the is the next generation existing um, uh, with all the protests you see, it began with Fridays for Future and now it's the rebellion of the last generation and, and whatever. And the, the people, especially the younger generation um, is focusing this more and more. And um, I think to have a mindset, which on the one hand brings you to impact, on, on the other hand, uh, wants to see this, this or wants to be behind the steering wheel uh, while influencing this change is growing because of this situation. And I really don't think that, I would probably not think that we have to have an entrepreneurial program for how to make companies really economically sustainable while focusing on impactful topics. I think this is a, um, yeah, uh, a trend of the time, I would probably say. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> that, in a way that leads me to, to another question, which is about um, the return. So we've been talking a lot about um, creating profits for the um, organization so it can sustain itself for the entrepreneur and for the, for the, for the uh, providers of the, of the money. Um, is that enough? Or is there um, a need for something um, beyond just counting money in the impact world, as, as we're solving the SDGs, saying that um, um, our, our actual purpose here is uh, not to make money, but our actual purpose is to solve for X, some subtopic of, of the SDGs, let's say. Mm -hmm. And um, currently, our policies are um, policies meaning the, the rules and regulations we have created for ourselves um, via our governments um, are more or less optimized towards um, financial profits because that's easy to measure, that's easy um, to handle, that's easy to turn into, into other infrastructure like building streets from it. Um, and, um, but it's not so easy to say, Okay, we, we built a sustainable organization that can sustain itself beautifully because it makes enough money, but the actual profit is something that's much more intangible, that's, um, but equally important or even more important. So, um, and this is, this is, it has two, two, two um, downsides. One, it's, it's usually hard to measure. That's the whole topic uh, of uh, um, the yet unsolved impact measurement. And um, the, the, the other portion of it, it's less easy to transfer into other types of energy as with money um, uh, or then with money. So um, do you see a, a shift in, in, in policy that supports this kind of a reward function that's other than, 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 than profit that could then turn into um, more fuel into these impact-oriented organizations? Yes. 
always say yes, no. It's, sometimes I often also have to say no, but yes, it, yes, I see a, a massive change. I think we're in Europe uh, are very lucky because uh, we got some regulation that I will speak about later on. But to um, start with that, what you said, um, um, the good thing is with impact investing, you get an additional return. This is what I always say. It, you get the financial return, but uh, even more because you get a social and or uh, ecological return, but you really have to measure it. So my, my personal feeling is um, if we measure um, the amount of money that we generate uh, while making the business, we also need to, to uh, exactly define where we want to go, like with the business plan, with our impact values. And this is the reason why we um, just created um, a platform called Loompact, um, which is really very easily accessible. And, and uh, you have a kind of very easy to understand what these companies are doing along the SDGs. Why? Because when I invest in this company or in this fund or whatever, I really want to know where my money goes, because this is probably the reason why I invested. I did not invest in, let's say, the next uh, oil facility, uh, but I invested in a impact VC. And I really want to see what, what, what they do and where they're invested and what uh, issues they tackle and so. And um, yes, you're right there. The standardization is not there. And I think we'll still take huh, at least five to 10 years that this, let's say, very colorful uh, bouquet <laughs> of, um, I would not even say reporting standards, but possible uh, presentation uh, 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 um, types of, of how impact is measured. Um, I mean, we, it, it took, took literally 100 years for finding financial standards for global reporting for financials. So why it should be different for an even more complex topic to assess impact. So it probably, I would even say it will probably take 20 years. But anyway, we need to start counting and uh, um, assessing data now because then later on it can be standardized. But we really need to know if we're moving into the right direction and uh if we're moving with the right direction to what amount and that's this is this is the reason why it's necessary and so you you really have to when you um come to why would we build, build that platform by the way and this is because when we are building financial instruments or we're building bonds and funds and so they are all impact linked so i really need to assess what impact they generate because outperformance fees or uh, returns are defined by the amount of impact the, the uh, financial products generate. And so this is linked and you cannot write this on paper because it's too complex. And so we <laughs> built this platform and, and we built a platform to promote impact investing in general because it's a free, pl free platform. So we need this element definitely uh, to assess this because this is an additional um, uh, part. The next thing is we need to assess this because of another situation. The lucky thing is we have the Green Deal in the EU, which in, let's say, brought the financial industry in the center of being the steering wheel of where the money is going towards um, a more sustainable future. And what this produced was the taxonomy law, which means that every institutional investor, whether it is a bank or a pension fund or whatever, so the large institutional investors have to report um, their taxonomy. I mean, that was a very bad, <laughs> um, uh, let's say a very bad um, context to it while declaring that probably investments in nuclear uh, power plants could be kind of a green energy thing, which is, I think, the wrong uh, direction. But anyhow, the general thing to define a taxonomy for if I invest only in coal plants, this is very brown or bad part of the scale. And if I only invest in, I just take this example, in solar plants and wind power and hydropower and so, this is very green, um, is a good thing because then um, there is a dependency curve that means that um, you have to, um, that, that you're, you're money that you have to deposit as a bank for every dollar or every euro you invest in something 
is dependent on the brownness or greenness of your whole portfolio. So it really can be, it, it is not feasible because it's very expensive for banks. It's not feasible to invest only in, in the brown part of the taxonomy. So you need to invest in the green parts. And so of course, these institutional investors are pushed towards the more greener parts in the investments. The downside of it is, at the moment, at least, in the taxonomy law and in the so-called SFDR, the Sustainable Finance Disclosure Regulation, which is the second part. So the taxonomy says you just need to assess this, and the SFDR says you need to communicate this. Um, so this is, let's say, two sides of the same metal. Um, the, um, but the good thing is that we that we have something, or we, we, they're obliged to to measure this, and so they will change their investments. The only downside is at the moment this is just only focused on greenhouse gases, um, which definitely is not addressing all of these social issues and so. Um, but it will come. So I know, as I said, or as you, Thomas, also said, it's a very complex thing, and even to assess, let's say, greenhouse gases, greenhouse gas footprints, and uh, even, let's say, negative footprints, so that, that you, 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 you uh, drag out uh, the greenhouse gases from the air again and, and uh, um, um, fix these. these. Um, this is something uh, what, um, it, this is the good part, but we really need to work on uh, including other parameters than the greenhouse gas footprints into this kind of taxonomy law, because then in the end, um, for instance, social impact becomes also investable or better investable and measurable. Mm -hmm. And um, and this is this is this is the journey we want to go. But we started it just let's say two years ago. Not we, but the EU started this two years ago with publishing the taxonomy law. Mm. You mentioned complexity, and I want to go there in a minute. Um, uh, but uh, let me let me frame it with what you just said um, and and expand on that a little bit so we could make it really easy <laughs> by doing something like um, um, implicit social bonds for example what I mean by that is um, we have um, very high tax rates and um, you can reduce the tax rate all the way to zero if you are solving societal issues um, through what you do, because then the tax is not needed. To put it really bluntly. Um, so this could be a very, very easy type of policy that can remove the complexity for the actors in the system very quickly and, and say, okay, I'm going to solve for these set of uh, societal issues because then I don't have to pay taxes. And uh, that's beneficial for me because then I can have more uh, money on the good side, right? So, um, but until or um, we don't know whether we ever reach a point where we have this type of policy, um, but until that point, it seems to me that um, holistic thinking, systemic thinking, um, complexity embracing thinking um, is at the core of what is happening. In the, in the impact solving environment. And that is not something that comes easy to many people. Um, so do you, what, what, what are your thoughts about uh, that whole complex? I mean, we can, we can ask questions about, is that, is that teachable? Is that learnable? Is that um, uh, um, institutionable, uh, institutionalizable? Um, how, how can we deal with that, with that issue of complexity? To come back to, uh, to your question, mm -hmm. um, what was the question? <laughs> okay, the, qu <laughs> the question was, um, okay, if we, 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 it seems like we're on a path towards policies that support um, the, the indirect financial benefit of doing, um, solving societal issues, All right? So, um, and then, um, but as we're on this way, currently, we, that, that those policies would make it easy to deal with those societal issues from the perspective of the entrepreneur and from the, from the perspective of the investor. But right now, it's still a massively complex issue. Just looking at the SDGs, 
the SDGs are all interlinked or most of them, you, you try and solve one, you have to touch five others. Um, and, um, and that's just where it starts, right? It's, it's a massively um, reductionist system in itself. Um, and, um, and, and really solving for these massively complex issues that we, that we have to solve right now as humanity um, requires complex thinking. Now, um, it does not seem like there's a lot of people around here that um, uh, really are versed in complex thinking, systems thinking, system dynamics, um, all of that. Um, and sometimes it even fires back in the, in, the, in, the, in the problem solving because it just, the complexity becomes unmanageable. Um, so what are your thoughts on, on, on this issue in, as a whole? Right, um, from from the perspective of learnability, teachability, uh, institutionalizability of um, handling complexity, and all of these things. What what are, what are your what are your thoughts around complexity? So um, you're absolutely right. There is not not that much people that can handle complexity very well, and this is the reason why um, people like I would say us and many others. I would probably say pioneers in this kind of scene are um, good at managing complexity and finding a solution um, that starts not with a complex solution, but with the most easiest one. I think it was Albert Einstein who said, um, yeah, exactly um, easy is the most complex thing. Um, because you, you need to reduce this without reducing it too much and, and just, just doing nonsense. So. Um, but on the other hand, you need to start. Uh, this is also where I, I, I just give you an example. Um, as a, an impact investor, I was pointing out my startups um, at the impact management project, which is, which is, by the way, great. It is a great tool, no question. Uh, and there is a little Excel sheet. <laughs> I would probably say it's uh, 20 cells or so where you can fill out your five dimensions of impact and your resources, what you use and what you want to achieve, et cetera. Um, and I said, folks, just go ahead, fill out this form and, and then it's fine. And then two days later, uh, uh, the CEO of the company uh, gave me a ring and said, are you nuts? <laughs> I read this through and this is hugely complex. I, I could employ three people for, for, for just filling out this form. This is hugely complex. Do you have anything else to start with? Uh, otherwise, we we just do good things and don't measure it. <laughs> and um, and this came and this is the reason why I said we need something which is um, which is basically also the assessment of philosophy of, of the Loompad platform, a kind of maturity level system to step in easily and to get more complex over time because you can handle complexity. Most of the people out there can handle complexity. But they're basically lost. Um, they're just not, look, not looking at a tree, but they're looking at a huge forest. And so basically, they, they, they really got lost and say, hey, where I am? Where, 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 to, where to start counting trees? And um, you really need to find out, you really need to number these trees to, to go and to find your path through it. And then with every, I mean, you, I think, Thomas, it's the same for you. If you think about impact and then you think you achieved a kind of understanding of what you know, you know that you're not, you know that you know nothing. <laughs> Just to, to, to give another quote from a very, um, yeah, knowledgeable man in, in the past. And this is, so it drags you down into a rabbit hole. But anyway, it is not, I think it's not about complexity, it's about to manage an entry point and uh, to find a way to make people, I would probably say, a fan of this kind of going deeper and diving deeper into the, the different levels and different uh, interactions with SDGs and, 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 but not at the first step. And this is, I think, the biggest issue we have in the whole impact investing or in generally in the impact scene is that, and especially in Germany, by the way, because we're Germans want to make it right. So impact has to be done right. Yes. And um, so we start with the most complex solution and enough is not enough. And uh, this is, I think, probably something which I brought back from the US. It's, hey, 
get it going, start somewhere, and you can you can later on um, look at where where you are and what you can improve. But basically, start somewhere. So um, as I say this, I want to um, highlight what you just said um, with, a, with a little anecdote from, from a field that we both know uh, um, something about you more than me, but uh, sound engineering. Um, so I used to have um, two books of that size, right? So one in German and one um, um, from America, American English. And they were describing the exact same thing. They were describing all of the ins and outs of a modern sound um, engineering studio. Now, um, the German book starts with the layout of a huge console, right? Um, I don't know, um, 32 bus, uh, I don't know how many lines um, and all of it, right? So, and that's where they start to describe this thing. And then, Gradually, over the course of the book, they break it down all the way so you can understand everything. The American book starts with, once there was a dude who wanted to record some music, so he put some wax on a cylinder and recorded it. Then he ran into the next problem, so he solved that. And, um, and at the end of the book, you get to the same, almost exact same uh, console, but you naturally understand it. So this is this is kind of what what it, what it seems you're saying, and um, in a way, this um, I, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna um, contradict what I said earlier because um, I think humans are really really good at dealing with complexity, some complexity. We're really really good at dealing with the complexity of humanness. So we can be in a family, and that's no computer would ever understand what that actually means or be able to deal with it. Um, but humans can naturally do it. Why? Because we, we grew gradually into it. Our, our um, survival depends on it, at least in the beginning. And, and then further on, our survival depends on dealing with larger groups um, and, and exploding complexity within those larger groups. And according to Dunbar, this starts breaking down at around 150. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we can deal with complexity. Maybe we just don't have the language to, the internal language to deal with complexity. Now, um, there's a, there's a, this, this internal language is expressed as feelings. It gives you an intuition about something, and mm. then you know. Right? So this is what we what we alluded to earlier. Have a conversation with the with the person who was the who's the impact founder to see understand about um, his or her right, real driver, and then you know whether it's an impact founder or not. But you cannot really measure that. Right? No, no. So so it's in the what Nora Bateson calls warm data, mm. um, where. The, the information is actually in the relationship between the links of the, of the complex network. Mm -hmm. and, um, and they're qualitative in nature. They're not quantitative. Uh, quantitative. And <clears throat> this I see as the, as the massive challenge that we, that, we, that we have to solve with those policies that we um, create um, policies that serve as generator functions for, for positive um warm data output mm -hmm. right so and so what what this then in turn means that either we get extremely lucky because somebody just intuitively does the right thing or we have um or we run computer models to to experiment with what kind of generative function slash policy creates what kind of output or we do it in some other way, um, and um, at the moment, I don't, I don't see these kinds of efforts happening. I see, I see the first category where we get somehow lucky. Some people have the hunch that um, doing the the taxonomy and the SFDR um, seems about the right thing to do <laughs> to mm -hmm. create incentives yeah. in the right direction, um, but it's 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 a very 
it feels very brutish in the way um, we could we could um, compare to what we could be doing. Mm -hmm. So, um, and and that in turn means that that um, we're really dependent on the um, complexity management capabilities of um, the EU in our space in Europe now, um, and that makes me really wonder. Uh, are we doomed? <laughs> um, no, okay. I don't think so. Um, but uh, the only thing I, I would probably disagree is that the EU um, really can handle complexity because the answer um, uh, it, it often is to answer complexity with uncertainty and more complexity. And this is not the right way to do. I mean, um, yesterday, I think, no, it was, I think on Wednesday, um, I got a document from, from a business friend from ours, and which is from Deloitte. And it is just summarizing everything and every document that is related to uh, taxonomy law, SFDR and so. And mainly, of course, they're coming from the EU. And uh, it's not only the amount of links and documents this you see, but every document is 80 pages. This is just this is just a thousands of pages that you need to read through to understand what you need to do to be compliant. Folks, <laughs> are you kidding? So to answer a complex question, with extreme complexity, I mean, I know that, of course, if you if you formulate a law, there has to be a certain um, yeah amount of words and a certain way of expression that is necessary. But all of the other documents that describe, let's say, details of and so are not not even okay. there is. What I really want to have is a in a nutshell document. Have you ever seen from the EU an in a nutshell document, a 101? No, never. I have never seen a document that's four pages long describing a rather complex thing in easy words. I haven't seen it. And this is, I think, the only thing where I say we are doomed if this, if this is not changing. And um, uh, my only plea that I have is that those folks that and this is not only for impact investing and taxonomy and whatever, um, which are doing regulation, really have to make it accessible uh, with a, a kind of, as I said, um, it's, it's of course it's necessary probably to go down the rabbit hole because it is a complex topic, but you need to start somewhere and not lose the persons while presenting them with link lists that long and with 1,600 pages of definition of something. Mm -hmm. This is not 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 the way to go. Um, so no, I think we're not doomed because I hope that mankind is smart enough. I really doubt because when I look at the war, but uh, mankind is smart enough to understand that we have to evolve. <laughs> but um, but yes, I'd, li I'd like to bring up a, a, a metaphor that might be helpful, um, which is not everybody has to study law to not go to prison. Yeah. Right. So, so how do we do this? Um, how do we know what's not to be done in order to avoid going to prison um, without reading that same amount of literature that you would have to read in order to really know what you have to not do uh, and, and to avoid that? So that could be similar. Yep. Um, and that is coded in a social contract. Mm -hmm. That is something you learn as you um, grow into being a human um, where you know this, these, these are things you don't do. You just don't do them. And um, because they hurt other people or they, they uh, directly or indirectly. Mm -hmm. um, so <clears throat> in a way that um, the solution what you, to what, you, what you're saying could either be um, very simple basic rules what I, what I just called generator functions, so that um, out of those, the, the, the emergent behavior that is afforded by those generator functions 
um, is something complex, um, like the the Stephen Wolfram uh, obsession with with the with the um, uh, what, what does he call it the the um, Mm. those trees of um of the decision trees that grow into complexity the mm. the um the machine that where there's there's little dots and they they make they make a decision of the yeah. next generation based on the color left and right and just those two basic rules or three basic rules that each of these blocks get create incredible complexity you will never be able to 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 um, move from the complexity that you see into the rules back right mm -hmm. cellular automaton that's the name so yeah. uh, and and um and from so that's what that's what a generator function is right it, it creates complexity but complexity of the kind we want there is complexity of the kind we want um beauty is complex right mm -hmm. nature is complex mm -hmm. love is complex that's the kind of complexity we want more of right so so what are the generator functions that's one way or we just explain it to people for long enough as a society as a as a shared um set of rules of society that um it becomes second nature we just mm -hmm. don't have that time so um so so we have to go the first path by definition right so and that that means that um there has to be a relearning in the way those the answer to the to the to the complexity that the planet presents us with um has is 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 answered mm -hmm. yeah yeah just just wanted to say exactly what you saying. it's it's also a matter of time i mean it's just yeah. especially when we're talking about impact investing is about um getting things done quickly um uh we need to achieve these goals i mean the sdgs are still valid for another eight years i mean then then we have something different and Usually, it should be, should be solved until uh, that point in time, but I, I really don't see that. I mean, it's just always the question if you ever can solve some of these issues. Um, but on the other hand, um, there is uh, this is this is about time, and I think especially when it comes to complexity, um, about what you were saying, is necessary to to find a way to get um, to get an abstract. Um, to to have this kind of an abstract model that makes it that makes this complex thing um a not so complex thing to work on and mm -hmm. then to go for that it's it's mm -hmm. the same for me i just uh what i think it was two or three weeks ago in an interview i was asked what would you describe what is the taxonomy and sfdr and everything all of the assessments about and what's distinguishing esg from sdg and something basically um the moderator asked me and said i've tried to read through all the documents that you were probably also were reading but mm -hmm. basically i was stuck after 40 pages and the other thousand pages i haven't read mm -hmm. and and i said i also have just not read all of the 1600 pages but um i can summarize it in this and that way so mm -hmm. um uh, for instance, that that I say um, ESG is about looking into the past, looking into your footprint, and uh, know your footprint and manage how to make it smaller. Mm -hmm. And SDG is about looking at solutions that you can contribute to and tracking if you're achieving it and if you're moving mm -hmm. into the right direction. And basically, that's about solution-based and future-based communication and, and assessment. Mm -hmm. One is looking to the past, one is looking to the future. Mm -hmm. Basically, you're only very green for Article 9 if you're looking to the future, if you're, you're, you're really working on that one. And this is, um, this was a, and he said, wow, this is the first time that I understand what it's about and it's probably worth digging in deeper. Mm -hmm. Hey, this is how it should work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, but this is why we have these conversations to make it um, to at least try and make it uh, more accessible um, to 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 more people. Um, if you if you imagine, um, so you know this question about um, what would you recommend your fifteen year old self um, <laughs> uh, um, to do? Um, if we shift that a little bit into um, Let's assume there's nothing for you to 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 recommend to your 15 year old because everything is uh, uh, 
gone wonderfully for you. But um, if you get to choose one person um, on the planet and you want to give this person an advice in the context of what we're talking about, um, who would that person be and what would that advice be? And I know it's a tough question, so you can take a moment. This is a very it. tough question because if there is just one person... Um... Or one, one type of person. You could also choose a type of person if that's... Yeah, probably. Yeah, that's 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 a very tough question. Uh, I mean, um, the type of person that I probably want to address is those ones that are um, probably stuck in keeping the world in keeping the world as it is. And there's so many leaders in the world that even I mean, I don't need to look at Russia at the moment or uh, in the <laughs> past president of the United States. And so, um, but there is so many also in, in the management and financial industry and so, and they wanna, they really wanna stick to what they, um, what they generated or think they have or whatever. Mm -hmm. And um, I really found out that the most successful people and the most, yeah, I would say happy people in the world are those ones that experimented a lot. Mm -hmm. This is the same for me, for instance, I was doing many, many things, you know that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, and, um, and I think um, doing the same thing over and over again will just, will just produce a uh, situation for your mind where you say everything is bad that changes the world. And mm -hmm. this is not the case because this, this is something that the only thing that needs to be constant is the change. Mm. And I think we see more and more people, especially over the last five years, um, um, that are afraid of losing their power due to the situation that more and more people want to experiment with, let's say, how the society works, uh, how economic works, how everything could be set up differently. So let's experiment, let's try something out. And um, no, this is, this is not the case. So mm -hmm. it's my plea to, to all of these ones um, that are probably even feel stuck about um, or even feel that there is more and more resistance to what they do is probably to not to resist to that, but to experiment with that and to mm -hmm. invite people to, to bring their experiments in. Mm. That's probably it. It's yeah. also a complex answer to a co very a tricky and complex question. Sorry, I hope that's... That, that, I, that I described it uh, quite well. So that, that, that was the question that everything else was leading up to. So, um, <laughs> so I, I, feel, I feel very complete now and I'm, I, I really love your answer. Um, is there anything you would like to get off your chest in closing um, today? <laughs> Yeah, uh, what I really like to get off my chest is um, probably it relates to that answer that I gave before. Many people see impact investing as a kind of experiment um, um, to, uh, let's say, approach investing and approach even doing good in a different way. Mm -hmm. And I really want to invite these people to try these experiments, even if it's not probably about their, their whole money that they probably... Uh, need for for their life and uh, or for their future but try to to find out uh, your way towards impact to uh, probably read through um, what are the SDGs um, look at examples for impact in general define yourself what is impact for you because this has to resonate with yourself uh, not in an esoteric way, but really you have to think about that's something for me with this as a topic, for instance, I, I go for climate action or I go to um, solutions against poverty or whatever. Um, this resonates most with myself. And then to, to make some bets and learn about what, what you get back to that. I mean, not everything will be successful, but you learn about that. And I think this learning is, I think, the most valuable thing you, you mm. can take out even more mm. as 
as uh, all of the money that, that you probably spend or you 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 will probably earn on, on, mm-hmm. on these kind of investment things. And so experiment and let this experiment, um, yeah, uh, or this, this mood for experiment grow mm-hmm. inside yourself. Beautiful. Thank you. Wonderful. That was Thomas, fun. Thank you for inviting me. <laughs> thank you for being here. It was amazing. Thank you so much. Okay. Then Thomas.